my TTL computer update on the progress with uh, my work on hex loader. Um, I started uh, the foundational changes needed for hex loader three. <laughs> so we've implemented two prior versions of hex loader. And again, the purpose of that is to receive uh, a program sent up from my laptop uh, and load that into the computer. Um, we've had two prior iterations of that hex load, the original zero and hex loader number, number two. And those have proven to be uh, un unreliable. And the underlying issue that we're trying to uh, resolve is that with the serial UART, right, we can only do two things with the UART. We can only send uh, a byte of data to it to transmit, and we can only receive request to receive a, a, a byte of serial data. So that poses some problems, uh, mostly on the receive side, really on the receive side. So if we request uh, a character from the UART, there's three possible outcomes. The first is that we request a, a byte from the UART and there's no data available. And in that case, the UART just transmits a, a binary zero back to us. Uh, the second uh, option is that we request a byte and there's a byte available and it sends us the byte. And the third uh, scenario is that we request a byte and there's a byte available, but the byte was received in error. So the data is no good. So those are the three possible uh, outcomes of receiving uh, a byte from the UART. Now, hex loader one didn't address any of those cases. It just assumed <laughs> everything that it received was good because it just received a, a stream of binary uh, data. That was the program and it just loaded it and assumed it worked and it would be fine. So that obviously was not reliable. Then went to hex loader two, which transmitted, rather than transmitting binary data, it transmitted the, uh, the, the data as two hex. Each uh, binary data was transmitted as two hex digits. So with that case, we could we could distinguish between uh, a, a binary zero and uh, hexadecimal data with a value of zero. We could make that distinction. So that addressed the first two cases of there being no data available and making the distinction between between a, a a zero meaning no data and zero valid binary data that's transmitted as zero, which would be two hexadecimal zeros. But it doesn't handle the, the last case where data is received in error. So now we're up to hex loader three. And what I've done is that I've modified the UART to have the capability of uh, a communications flag. And that communications flag, uh, will uh, account for those situate those conditions. If there's no data available, the communications flag will be zero. If there's a byte available to read, the communications flag will return a one. And if there are is an error uh, in that data, the communications flag will be will be greater than one. So those that will give us uh, the information that we've been missing to, to really understand what's going on with the uh, data that we're receiving from the UART. So the question remains, well, how do we get access to this communications flag? Because again, we can only send a byte to the UART for transmit and receive one byte uh, from the UART. So the behavior will uh, will be this. If, we to, if the UART receives uh, an, an, a value of FF to be transmitted, it will um, interpret that as a command. And that command basically says, the next time you're requested uh, to send a byte, send the com flag instead. So that will give us the ability to uh, query the com flag as well as uh, receive you know, data from the, from the UART. So basic operation would be that uh, the hex loader will send the the hex FF to the UART. It will then uh, re request a byte, which would be the COM flag. 
and then it would, if the com flag indicates the data is available, it will read that data, send the acknowledgement to the sending program, or if the com flag indicates an error, it would send a negative acknowledgement, and that sending program would send uh, the character again. So what I've done is implement a small program right now that just uh, to test that new behavior, and we'll see that uh, in a moment, that 27, that's sending of the FF to the uh, UART, and the 00, zero is the, conf, the return com flag. So that basically indicates no data available. Again, there it's sending the request for the com flag, and there's the 00, zero again saying no data available. So I have the terminal up and going, and I am going to send uh, a, a zero digit as soon as the com flag is sent. Waiting for that to happen. There it is. I've pressed the zero. Now we see that the com flag returns that there's data available, and that's the reading of the data, the 48, which is uh, decimal zero in ASCII. Sending the com flag again. And now the com flag is zero, right? Because there's no data available. And we see that that zero was uh, echoed back to the terminal. So we'll send another character. We'll do a ca capital A this time. We want to wait for that com flag to show up on the display so we have the timing good. And there's the com flag. I've pressed the A. There's the zero indicating data available. And 65. And that's the capital A. And we see that again, echo to the terminal. Okay, so that's a good test of uh, the new com flag behavior. And again, that's going to be the, uh, that's really the foundation that we need to implement our third and final version, hopefully, of the hex loader. And uh, so our next video will hopefully be uh, a successful uh, look at that, uh, the hex, load, hex loader three and uploading program from our laptop uh, in a reliable fashion. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.